capital gains taxes, federal income tax, cost basis, and so many different words you've probably heard of before, but how do they really work? And when you sell a stock, how does the IRS determine if you're paying the federal income tax or the capital gains tax? Did you know that in the year 2022, if your taxable income is less than $41,675 as a single filer or $83,350 as a married couple filing taxes jointly, your long-term capital gains tax rate is at 0%. But wait, the title of this video says, how do I pay 0% in capital gains taxes making $100,000 a year? So was this a clickbait? No, it's not clickbait. There's a way to pay 0% in long-term capital gains taxes when you make over six figures in salary. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Sa and welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to pay 0% in capital gains taxes even when you're making $100,000 a year in gross income, how to take advantage of the 0% capital gains taxes during your early retirement, and how people use this strategy to step up their cost basis to save money on taxes. If you don't know what a step up cost basis is, be sure to keep watching until the end of this video. I'm gonna give you the full breakdown and examples of how the numbers work. By the way, if you're someone who's always writing emails, working on school papers, or building a resume for your next dream job, you should check out Grammarly. And Grammarly can proofread your writing and save you so much time and make your writing look professional. I've been using Grammarly Premium since 2018, and it saves me so much time from having to proofread my emails. And I also use Grammarly to proofread my resume, which got me a job paying six figures in salary. You can get the free version of Grammarly and I will put my affiliate link in the description below. So first, let's quickly refresh your memory about how capital gains tax and taxable income work. Just keep in mind that each one of you has a unique financial situation and I'm not a tax professional and this is not any specific advice. I'm gonna simplify my examples as much as possible so you can have a general understanding of how taxes work for you now. Don't forget the rule number one to get the long-term capital gains tax rate at 0, 15, or 20%. You have to hold your investments for at least 12 months, and I will talk more about that in a little bit. In the year 2022, and the numbers will likely continue to go up every year, if you're single and your taxable income is between $0 and $41,675, or you're married filing taxes jointly making between $0 and $83,350, your capital gains tax rate is at 0%. And most of you watching my videos fall be between 0 or 15% in capital gains tax rates. Unless you're a baller making over $445,000 or $500,000 a year, then that puts you in the 20% capital gains tax rate. You should also consider adopting me. Also keep in mind that your taxable income is after the standard deduction of $12,950 for single filers and $25,900 for joint filers. So for example, if you and your spouse collectively make $100,000 a year in gross income, then your taxable income is $74,100 after the standard deduction. And let's say you sell your investment and made a $5,000 profit, your total income will be $79,100 and you will pay $0 on the $5,000 capital gains because your total taxable income is still less than $80,000. Simple, right? But let me give you more examples. You can also reduce your taxable income if you make pre-tax contributions to your 401k and HSA. Let's say you're single and your gross income is $70,000 a year. Your pre-tax 401k or uh, TSP contribution is $20,500 and HSA contribution is $3,650 and the standard deduction is $12,950, your total taxable income will be reduced from $70,000 to $30,900. You decided to sell the mutual fund that you bought for $10,000 and now it's gained, uh, let's say $18,875. Then the profit you made, which is your capital gains, would be $8,875. If you add $32,900, to $8,875, then you will still be under the taxable income threshold for the 0% capital gains tax rate. But what if 
your profit was more than expected and let's say you made ten thousand dollars from selling your mutual fund you would still pay zero dollars up to eight thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars and then pay 15 percent of the remaining one thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars from the gains you made incredible right let me give you another example of what my wife and i are doing when we retire early let's say in nine years the taxable income limit for the zero percent capital gains tax rate goes up to ninety thousand dollars and we're making one hundred thousand dollars a year in gross income since my wife and i both would be working we would contribute to our pre-tax or traditional 401k and tsp in the total amount of forty one thousand dollars and keep in mind that these numbers are based on the 2022 numbers traditional IRAs at $12,000 and family HSA at $7,300. If you don't know what an HSA is, I will put the video link in the description below. But our total taxable income for that year would be reduced from $100,000 to $13,800 after the standard deduction and the above the line deductions like 401ks, TSP, traditional IRA and HSA. Above the line deductions mean you can take the deductions regardless of whether you itemize or claim the standard deduction. If this still doesn't make sense to you, then you can sign up for a free financial coaching session by visiting firesidechat.com coaching. Now let's go ahead and assume that our total taxable income is still hypothetically at $13,800. We're going to have another source of income, which is our dividends. And we should have at least a million dollars in the dividend stock portfolio, yielding around 4% every year, making $40,000 a year in qualified dividends. That $40,000 would be at a 0% capital gains tax rate because we will still be under the taxable income threshold. And also keep in mind that only qualified dividends are taxed as long-term capital gains. So make sure you watch my video about the differences between qualified and ordinary dividends. We would also convert our traditional IRA to Roth IRA at around $40,000 a year every year until we turn 59 and a half. I talked about the five-year conversion ladder strategy in this video, and I will put the link in the description below. But basically for the first five years, I'm going to convert $40,000 a year from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, which would count as a taxable income. When I add up $40,000 from dividends, $40,000 from the conversion and $13,800 in earned income, we would have a total of $93,800 in total taxable income. So in order to stay uh, under the income threshold, we would probably end up donating that excess money to a charity or something else or reduce the conversion uh, to stay under that income threshold. So five years after we initially make the annual $40,000 Roth IRA conversion, we could start withdrawing that conversion tax free. So during the first five years from ages 45 to 50, we'll have enough cash to cover our expenses without triggering any additional taxable events. For the next 10 years from ages 50 to 59, we would have tax free withdrawals from our Roth IRA in the amount of $40,000 every year until we reach our normal retirement age of 59 and a half our total taxable income would be reduced from $93,800 to $53,800. Then we would have more room to pay 0% in capital gains taxes if we decide to sell more investments. As I said before, this strategy can be very complicated. So if you made it this far, be sure to hit the like button and comment down below and let me know that you made it. By the way, you can get our free fire resources by visiting firesidechat.com contact. You can also check out the Fireside Chat shop and I have all of my stuff on my bookshelf at firesidechat.com shopping. So before you use this strategy, you need to make sure that you have a solid plan and enough cash on the sideline. And I'm all about paying 0% in capital gains taxes, but if I have to go over the threshold because we sell, uh, sold more investments for expenses, and trigger a 15% capital gains tax rate, we want to have the cash on the sideline to pay for that 15% tax. We won't want to use our investment to pay our taxes because that's an unnecessary loss from our portfolio, right? The 15% capital gains tax rate is still cheaper than the 24 or 32% federal income tax rate. Your capital gains don't necessarily come from your investments and they could be from selling your investment property selling tickets to a sporting event or a concert 
art, cars, or other physical or non-physical assets. You have to sell something and make a profit in order for you to pay capital gains taxes. So if you bought $10,000 for a Tesla stock and you sold it for $10,000, then you don't pay any taxes on the sale because you didn't make any profit on it. If you sold it for $11,000, then you will pay taxes on the $1,000 uh, that you realized for 0, 15 or 20% if you held a stock for at least 12 months. If you sold it in less than 12 months, then you will have to pay the federal income tax, which is much higher than the capital gains taxes. Another strategy people use is the stepped up cost basis. And let me give you an example, and I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. Let's say you're under the 0% capital gains income threshold and you want to sell something that made a significant profit. You have to be mindful of how much you sell from a taxable account because you want to avoid that 15% capital gains, right? You bought $5,000 worth of an ETF and now it's worth $40,000. And you can sell the ETF at $40,000 and then buy it right back and now your cost basis is at $40,000. There's no 31 day waiting period or what's called a wash sale because that only applies when you take capital losses. So if you have a good strategy in place, you wouldn't have to worry about paying that $35,000 capital gains in the future. So the bottom line is you need to have a clear understanding of the income threshold for capital gains taxes, qualify versus ordinary dividends, and other tax rules for capital gains before you reach your retirement age. My wife and I are constantly working on our early retirement strategy, and one of the biggest items is to minimize our taxes as much as possible. We're looking to retire at age 45 and then live on our, on our investments for the rest of our lives. Just keep in mind that as long as you have earned income that comes from being employed or self-employed, you have the ability to reduce your taxable income by contributing to your traditional or pre-tax 401k, TSP, IRA, and HSA. These contributions are above the standard tax deductions you get every year. Our goal is to stay under the income threshold during the first five years of our early retirement while we convert our pre-tax money to the Roth IRA. Again, this is a very complicated strategy, so if you don't have a clue about what you're doing, find a professional or contact me for a free consultation at firesidechat.com coaching. And if you want to know more about how we're investing for our early retirement, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.